Hello, in uh, this lecture we'll step through a few examples of variable elimination for inferencing base nets. Okay, here's our first base net. It has six variables. U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. And we're going to look at variable elimination for the query. What's the probability distribution for the random variable you conditioned on having observed C being plus C. Well, our initial factors are all the conditional probability tables, um, where for each of the tables that has the variable Z in it, we restrict ourselves to those rows consistent with plus C. So, now in addition, that means we have the following set of initial factors. We have factor for the marginal for u, the marginal for v, the marginal for w, then the conditional of x given u and v, the conditional of y given v and w, and the conditional of c given x and y, but only the entry is consistent with plus c. When we do variable elimination, we have a choice of ordering in which we eliminate the hidden variables. Uh, we'll use this ordering over here. We'll first Eliminate W, then Y, then V, then X. Okay, let's start our work. So when we eliminate W, then we first have to join on W, and we'll form a new factor by joining on W. So what are the factors we have with W in it? We have PW here. We have the condition of Y given V and W, and that's it. So only two factors have W in it. So to eliminate W, we generate a new factor. We'll call it F1, and it will be equal to the sum over all instantiations of W of the product of the factors that have W in it. These factors contain the variables Y and V, so our new factor will be over the variables y and v. And in doing so, we got rid of these two factors here. Next, we're eliminating the variable y. For eliminating y, we need to look at all the factors consistent with y. So which factors are left here? pu, pv, these don't have y, x given u and v doesn't have y, and then here, this one here, plus c given x comma y has y in it, and our new factor here, f1, also has y in it. So to eliminate y, we'll join these two factors with y together, and sum over all instantiations of y. So we'll have factor 1, which is over y and v, and the second factor, which is P plus Z, given X and Y. We join these together, sum over Y, and that gives us a new factor, F2. This new factor will be over the variable V and X, and the instantiation plus Z. So we have F2 will be plus C, V, and X. When we eliminated y, that means we got rid of this factor over here and this factor over here. Now we're moving on to eliminate v. So the factors we're left with are this one, this one, this one here, and then this one here. Which one of these have v in them? Well, three of them have v. There is this one here, this one here, and this one here. So we'll, in this case we'll join three factors together. It's always all the factors that have the variable in it that we have to join together. So we'll generate a new factor by joining over V, which means we have to sum out over V the product of all the factors that involve V. There is PV, there is P of X given U and V, and then there is F2 
of plus c, v, and x. When doing this, we get a new factor, f3. This new factor will be over all the variables appearing on the right-hand side here. Remember, v is summed out over, so it disappears, so we're left with x, u, plus z, and this is again x. So we're left with a factor over plus c, x, and u. And in this process, we eliminated these two factors up here, as well as this factor over here. Okay, moving on. We're left with this factor here and this factor over here. Next one in our elimination ordering is x, and that's actually the last one. That's the last of our hidden variables. So x appears just in F3. So to eliminate x, all we have to do is join all factors that have x in it, which in this case is just one factor, F3. So we'll sum over x, F3 plus C, x, and u. This will give us a new factor, F4 which is just having in it plus c and u. After doing so, we've gotten rid of, um, let's see, this one over here, and now we're left with f4 and pu. Those are our two factors left after we eliminated all these four hidden variables. Okay, all hidden variables have been eliminated. At this point, we're left with two factors. All we're left to do is to join those factors together. So at this point, we're going to join those factors together. And we know that will give us the joint between plus c and u, which will be equal to pu times f4 plus c comma u. If we now want the conditional of u given plus c, we just need to renormalize to find p u given plus c. That's it. We're done. We can also take a look at the factors we generated and see um, how large they are to get an estimate of how expensive the variable elimination would have been. So if we look at the factors we generated, we generated the factor over two variables another one over two variables, another one over two variables, another one over one variable here. So the largest factor we generated was one over two variables, um, which isn't too bad. So the variable elimination would have generated um, relatively small factors in this case and would have been quite effective. We're given a base net with six variables. And our query in this case is to find the conditional distribution for V and W conditioned on plus z. Okay. Let's work on that. So when we do variable elimination, the first thing we do is list all the initial factors involved. And what are the initial factors? The initial factors are all the conditional probability tables from the base net, where if, that, if a conditional probability table has the variable, any of the evidence variables in it, then we instantiate those evidence variables to their value. So in this case, the only evidence variable is z. And so whenever a conditional probability table has z in it, we're going to instantiate that variable to be plus z and only keep the entries consistent with plus z. Okay, in this case, that means our initial factors are the marginal for u, the conditional for v given u, w given u, x given u, y given u, and plus z given x and y. Now, when running variable elimination, we have a choice of ordering of variables. Um, we're going to fix it for this exercise, so this is what we're going to work with. We're going to first eliminate y, then x, then u. Keep in mind that in general, um, this choice of ordering can play a big role in terms of determining how computationally expensive your variable elimination is, as the ordering can, can affect the size of the factors you generate along the way. But for this exercise, we're going to 
stick with a fixed ordering, first y, then x, then u, and just step through how it works for that order. Okay, so we start by eliminating y. To do that, we need to look at all the factors that involve y. In this case, there is two factors. This one here, this one here. These two factors are getting joined. So we have y given u and plus c given x and y. Joining means multiplying the consistent entries together. Then we, join, we sum over y. What we get out is our first factor that we generate in the variable elimination here, factor 1, and it is over the variables u, x, and is consistent with plus c. So we have u, x, and plus c. After doing so, we have eliminated y and hence these two factors here. Okay, moving on to the elimination of x. Which factors does x appear in? x appears in px given u, and in this factor 1 here, which has u, x, and plus c. So joining over x means sum over all instantiations of x, the product of all the factors that involves x. So we have px given u and f1 u x plus c. This gives us a new factor f2. This factor f2 will be over the variables u is again u and then plus c. So a new factor f2 over u and plus z. And in doing so we got rid of the factors that we joined together to get this new factor. And so we're left with four factors. This one here and then this three here. Moving right along, we move on to eliminate variable u. Okay, to eliminate u, we need to join all factors that contain u. In this case, that's pu, pv given u, pw given u, and then this factor f2 giving u plus c. So in this case, joining on u means joining all remaining factors together. So, join on u means we'll eliminating u means we'll join all these factors and sum out over all instantiations of u. And these are the factors pu, v given u, w given u, and the factor f2 which is over u and then has plus z. What we're left with is a factor 3 which is over v, w, and has plus c. So v, w, and plus z. And this has eliminated these factors up here. At this point, all we're left with is this one factor. So at this point, we have eliminated all the hidden variables. That is, all the variables that are neither query variable nor evidence variable. So they've all been eliminated. We're left with one factor, this factor over here, f3. We're left with one factor. We know that at this point we have found the joint between V and W and plus Z, which is equal to F3 of V, W plus Z. Um, then just renormalize to find the conditional p of v and w given plus c, and we're done. Again, let's consider the size of the factors generated along the way, as that tends to determine the computational efficiency or lack of efficiency of this process. The first factor we generated had two variables in it, u and x. The second factor, one variable, u, and then the last factor, two variables, v and w. So again, not too bad, the factors generated along the way are relatively small, so this would have been computationally pretty quick to compute. Okay, that's it for the variable elimination examples.